Look at you, you make me blind. Why do you have to be so beautiful all the time? I know I can't be with you. It's killing me to see you with someone else. What to do? Now I'm in the corner and watching you smile. Hi guys, this is Dia and welcome to Mom and Me. So today I'm going to give you my living room tour specifically focusing on plant decor. So if you are a plant person or you want to be one and want to know easy to care for or hard to dye plants, then this video is for you. I'm a plant person myself and I love having plants around. I love to see them. I love to care for them. There are numerous benefits of having indoor plants. They clean the air, they make you feel happy, they reduce stress and above all, they make your home look pretty. Having said that, I'm not a kind of person who would spend hours and hours each week looking after the plants. I only have plants that need minimal time and attention. So if you too are looking for less maintenance plants, then I will be sharing top 5 easiest plants that you can start with. They will not die even if you want them to. So this is my home entrance and I used to have a plant right here and this is a spot which generally does not get a lot of light. It only get filtered light through these glass that I have on the door. Right now I have down lights on but otherwise this is comparatively a very dark spot. And I used to have a peace lily here and unfortunately it could not survive here though peace lily can actually thrive in dark lighting conditions but it didn't do well here. And after that I thought let me place a rubber plant here which unfortunately died too. Rubber plant are quite sturdy plant. They can survive in most of the conditions but it didn't survive here. So since then I have stopped placing any plant in this spot. Sometimes you do learn from your mistakes, don't you? So this is one spot I have found that my none of my plants like. So you need to be very careful. If, if your plant is not surviving, maybe you need to shift the space that your plant is sitting in. The only plant I have thriving in my home entrance is this white butterfly. But the only condition for white butterfly to thrive is that it should always have moist soil. Moist but not soggy. There's a difference. Soggy soil will cause root rot and most plants do not like wet feet or do not like sitting in the water. So you need to have the best soil mixture for soil to have enough drainage but not retain or make the soil soggy. So what is the best soil mixture? Let me show you. So what soil mixture do I like to use for my indoor plants? Well, I use a 50-25-25 ratio. So 50% is the potting mix, which is a soilless mixture of plant compost, peat moss, perlite, uh, coconut coir, etc. And you can in fact grow your plants in 100% of potting mix. But what I have observed with potting mix that it does not hold on to water for very long. So I like to add 25% soil. Soil not only it has a lot of nutrition for your plants, but it also holds on to water, which is great if uh, to create those moist soil condition and humidity for your plants. Plants love humidity. And lastly, I like to add. 25% of sand which kinds of help which kinds of aerate the soil and it also helps in better drainage so your plant will never be sitting in wet feed or the soil will never get too soggy so it's the perfect soil mixture that I believe my it works for my plants and not only for my indoor plants but also for my outdoor plants I use the same soil mixture so now let's look at top five plants that are easy to care for sturdy and hard to die before we start, I would like to thank Yokicon for sending me my indoor plants best friend. It's a diffuser that I have been using since a month now and I will talk about the benefits of having a diffuser for your plants later in the video. The first one has to be white butterfly as I just mentioned. White butterfly or arrowhead plant is commonly known for its low maintenance and versatility. Its beautiful foliage changes in shape as the individual leaves transition from juvenile to maturity. White butterfly is poisonous to pets and humans, so always keep it out of reach from children and pets. 
white butterfly doesn't enjoy light conditions which are too bright so a south facing window sill would be less than ideal for optimum growth avoid bright direct light for the best possible growing conditions however you need to make sure that you water them at least twice in summer and twice in winter if you have heating on otherwise just once as it likes moist but well drained soil now let's look at plant number two which is rubber plant as soon as we enter my drawing room the first plant i have is this rubber plant it is a very healthy plant that loves this sunny spot at home these are fairly easy to care for but dislike being moved over and over again this plant has seen its ups and downs when i bought it few years ago i had placed it in another corner in the same room there i observed that it had grew a lot of new leaves but in few weeks time the new baby leaves started to fall and when i closely observed the plant i found many scaly bugs on its stem back then i had little idea what that was as i was new to plants 2 years ago so i asked google and after searching a lot i found out that it was a scale bug and it had infected my plant so badly that it was almost dead but i took care of this plant every day i would spray neem oil and water spray onto the plant took all the scales off using a wet tissue paper gave the plant a good shower and repeated the process over several days till all the bugs were cleaned and then i learned an important lesson that you need to observe your plants closely on regular basis if you do observe them you will pick up any bugs or insect infestation if your plant is droopy and needs to be watered if leaves are falling if plants has possible root rot etc and you can save your plants in time watching you smile and i can't get over you i'm losing my mind all of the things that are with the third plant is palm areca next to the rubber plant is my palm areca even this plant is so hard and sturdy they are all hard to die all they need is a good spot where they get plenty of light and water as a rule what i have learned that plants like moist but not soggy soil as i mentioned before so water only when top 1 inch of the soil has dried out and water generously when you do so so that soil is evenly watered next plant is pothos or money plant this is my absolute favorite plant If you have never owned any plant in your life and would like to buy one now then this is the plant I highly recommend not because it helps increase the home decor but because it is highly sturdy very easy to care for it literally asks for nothing but watering on a scale of 0 to 10 this plant needs care next to 1 it's that easy to care for it needs a well lit spot and watering once a week and in growing season add liquid or slow release fertilizer to soil and it will happily give you one new leaf every few days once the vine is long enough you can cut it and propagate it in water to propagate money plant all you have to do is cut below the node as it has root hormones at the nodes So guys, this is my office area, and the pothos or the money plant that I have here. This is the mother plant. This is the only pothos I have ever bought in my life, and I have actually taken cuttings so many times from this plant, and I have propagated not one, not two, not five, but ten pothos uh, plants from this single plant. and pothos is so easy to propagate i'll show you what i do so basically what i do is i will not take one leaf but i will take at least 1 2 3 4 5 to five leaves and i will cut it just just from here just above the node and i will just submerge this into water and i'll take one or two leaf off still leaving a couple of leaves on and then you just have to forget about it because it will sprout the roots in a matter of one or two weeks if you keep on looking if you keep on waiting then the process seems unending it seems like forever 
but you already have a couple of leaves hanging so it is already serving the purpose of providing like you know a beautiful aesthetic ambience to your home so just put at least take this much cutting put it in the water forget about it and you will see that it has sprouted the roots i'll show you the one that i have okay so these is the pot that has all the cuttings and see the beautiful root system it has grown and all i did is that i took the cuttings put it in water see the i'll show you how many do i have here so this is one two and three and see how i haven't got just one or two leaves i have got quite a few they've actually tangled so this is the one cutting that i took but it was growing in a curve shape i thought it's time to propagate and then this is another one uh, this is quite long and this is the third one it has also sprouted one new leaf if there are any leaves that has turned brown or yellow it's just try and pull it if it comes off easily that means it's it's the time you need to take it off if it's still attached there you go if it's still attached then leave it on so you don't have to put a lot of pressure just a little bit and it will tell you and here see a new root is sprouting from there these are called aerial roots actually and this you can see that you can actually now if i put it in soil it will grow fabulously but i like to put some uh, pothos in water just in case i want to transfer them to the bathroom or to the kitchen or to a high up area where i can't water them very frequently so i like to always have at least a little bit of stems into the water at all times but i love how it has grown so beautiful inside so pothos as i said it's easiest to propagate just cut and put it in the water and that's it you will have a new plant and i have propagated 10 plants from one single mother plant and i'm so proud and which is why i love this plant this is my absolute favorite it gives such good nice decor um, to your house if you just it's a vine and you know when the vine hangs uh, it just looks beautiful they say actually money plan should always be facing upwards and not downwards I get that point because it's a money plan you should you know it should always climb up and not climb down but for some reason I just love it climbing down so I always leave it like that so now let me give you a 360 degree view of my drawing room and you will see all the plans that I have and if I only That's our backyard so this is my office space and I have a monstera here now this monstera is actually a wild plant in fact most of the uh, indoor plants they actually come from wild but they are very good indoors as well this is also a vine it climbs up and there you go so this is the monstera here I have to keep rotating this from time to time because it gets a lot of light from this window and it always faces that side. So I just keep rotating it so that it does not bend in one direction and it looks very odd. So if you have a plan that is just facing towards one direction, it's time to rotate. So it's giving me a new leaf here. So every time a new leaf comes up, I get super duper excited. And this Monstera plan actually had aerial roots and they were attached to of course the uh, one of the leaves so i just cut that and i propagated that so i'll show you how the propagation is going i think i shared that in one of the vlogs but i'll show you what it's doing and update now so many times i wanted to put my arms around you just to be close to you and in my head it's just you so these were my top 5 plants that I would highly recommend to have at home as they are very easy to care for and would require minimum time of yours. Having plants around is great but what happens to them when you travel and you cannot give them to your friends to care for while you are away? 
well i am going on holiday in eight weeks so i'm looking for solution myself so here are a few things you can do if you're going on one week holiday you can group your plants together this way they lose less moisture and help keep each other's day alive make sure you put the curtains on so that they get light but not direct sunlight to increase the moisture levels you can turn on a humidifier i would highly recommend you to invest in a large capacity humidifier like this one i used to use a 400 ml humidifier for my plants before and i know refilling it every day is not an option when i am away a large capacity humidifier like this will last you for few days without refilling but what if you are away for more than few weeks like i will be so in that case another option is to group plants together in a bath tub and have few pebbles at the bottom and keep the water outlet on enough to provide a water source to your plants but not too much to drown them or have wet feet you need to make sure that your bathroom does has some light source to increase the humidity levels you can turn the diffuser or humidifier on and make sure you have a water source for the humidifier as well so that it does not run out of water have the question how to care for the plants while you are away on a holiday well i have that same question in my mind because i have um, started having plants after covid started we haven't traveled since past three years now it's been it's gonna be the first time when we will actually travel with plants um, being at home so definitely they will not be indoors where nobody can access them Few of my plants my friend has agreed uh, to keep and care for and I am most probably going to give her all my pothos but the big plants like Monstera, Areca or rubber plant, the ones that I have outside. So all of those plants what I am thinking is to uh, arrange for a drip irrigation or the water spikes. So water spikes, I'm not 100% sure. My, I am more inclined to the drip irrigation system and I have seen uh, them at the bunning. So basically it's like a long pipe, it's a long hose and you have to poke holes into them and you have to um, put an outlet and that outlet will go into one of your plants and then you have to turn the hose on and pretty much you have to make the settings how much you want the water to be dripped. At, uh, and at how many intervals they are vi uh, various different kinds of drip irrigation system from uh, manual to automated <clears throat> so you can actually go for it that's the um, that's something that i am personally thinking to go for but i'll definitely keep you guys updated when i actually go and buy something for now i am going to test the bathtub method and i'll keep you i'll um Keep you updated on that as well in my next vlog, uh, not the next next, when I make the, uh, what I'm going to do with my plants when I travel, uh, a vlog like that. I have also tried the water bottle method on the Monstera um, Eureka and on the rubber plant, it didn't work because after a certain point, uh, there was a vacuum and the water flow was stopped completely so I can definitely vouch for it that you cannot um, just rely on the water bottle method no matter what because you really don't want your plant to starve for food and water and all of that one another thing that I'm going to do is put the curtains on these are sheer curtains so it will definitely bring uh, indirect light in but not the direct light so that will help plants to evaporate less water and maintain more humidity and yes the humidifier for sure uh, if you're just going out for one week and even if you're not going out generally if you have plants at home humidifier is your plants best friend invest in one you don't have to go for a big one uh, there are small capacity humidifiers as well so go for a small capacity one i used to have i think just half a liter so and i used to refill it all the time but i am so thankful for yokecon for sending me 16 liters that like literally this is one less job uh during the day and in fact one less job um 
one another job to do every week i would say i don't refill it quite often because i don't use it on turbo mode but just the normal mode and i'm very thankful that i have a, a humidifier that my plants are loving and flourishing so that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you in my next video bye for now all of the things that i wish i could tell you